All right, this next video is on Lagrange multipliers, and I'm going to introduce this via an example. Um, and the example is to find the extreme values of z equals x squared plus 2y squared on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now I'm going to give you a kind of a graphical um, explanation of this, and then I'll give you kind of the how exactly to solve this using Lagrange multipliers. Um, Lagrange multipliers in general is basically another way, it's a different way, to find mins and maxes. And there are some problems in which it is easier to use Lagrange multipliers and some problems in which it's easier to find critical points and do the, um, do the kind of absolute min and max check around the boundary. If you notice this, the boundary is that circle. And so if you think about checking the values of that boundary, it's, it's sort of a challenging proposition to think about taking all the points on that boundary and then checking for z values on them. So Lagrange multipliers, this is a good problem for, for Lagrange multipliers. All right, so now graphically, we have a, an elliptic paraboloid that is stretched more, this one's stretched more in the x direction. So we have this, Elliptic paraboloid. It's kind of stretched more in the x direction. Now, this circle has a radius 1. So, what I want you to picture is take a circle of radius 1 just on the xy plane. Well, there's some circle of radius 1. And I'm going to erase it now. Bring it up to, oh boy. Okay, I'm sorry, I pressed undo there because I wanted to get rid of that blue mark and then something glitched in the video. So hopefully this isn't too confusing, I'm sorry. Um, so I want to, I was going to try to get rid of that blue mark and I can't. All right, so we have to pretend that that blue is a rubber band. I'm going to change its color. We're going to stretch that rubber band around this shape. Now, because it's squished in one direction, the rubber band is going to hit higher over here than it would here. And so we'd get this rubber band that would kind of go up there, back down on that side, get tall here, goes back down to that side, and then goes back down there and around. All right, so when you stretch this rubber band, it gets higher on the sides of the bowl because those that bowl is is narrower in the y direction than in the x. Now the maxes and mins, we can kind of see from this picture, we've got maxes there and there, and then minimum values can stray into the circle here and here. Now, if I were to squish this flat and do a contour map, so this is a map of our xy plane only, I'm going to squish it flat. This paraboloid is stretched more in the x direction. So maybe there's one paraboloid when z is equal to 1. And here's another one when z is equal to 2. And we could continue this. When you look at that circle, that circle has a radius of 1, which actually does this if you squished it flat. So if you notice, if you set z equal to 1 here, then the x's are plus or minus 1, and the y's are plus or minus it's a 1 over root 2. But if you set it equal to 2, then your y's become plus or minus 1. So there's that circle where each one of these marks, like right there is 1, um, and here is 1. Okay. So notice that the slope is the same. The tangent lines um, at each one of these four different points. So at, I don't want to use that color. Let's use this color. So at these four different points here, that is where the circle matches up to the ellipse with the same slope. For both of them. It's when the circle and the ellipse have the same slope. 
So what we're looking for here is for them to have the same gradient vectors. So what we want is the uh, gradient of the function that is represented by the ellipse to be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be equal to, it could be some kind of a, uh, a multiple of, and we call that lambda, times the gradient of the constraint function. So when the gradients match up, when the slopes match up, that's where we're going to get mins and maxes. All right, so this guy right here, this equation, is our key to Lagrange multipliers. So now let's continue this example. All right, so we're back to the same example, and now we want to apply this the gradient of f equal to lambda times the gradient of g, Lagrange multipliers, and you'll see how a solution is going to come out of this fairly quickly. So now one thing that's tricky is choosing f and g. f is what you want to find to min the min or max of. So the function f is what the min or max is of. And then g, we call this the constraint. So we want to find the min and max of a function constrained to some other type of function or functions. All right, so that's how to determine f or g. So, um, so we need to find gradients of both of these things. So the gradient of f if we take the partial of it with respect to x, we get 2x, and the partial of it with respect to y, we're going to get 4y. If we take the gradient of g, so the gradient of the function of g, with x is 2x and y is 2y, then we want to set these equal to each other. So we want to set the gradient of f, 2x, 4y, equal to lambda, some constraint, times 2 or yeah, times the gradient of g, which was 2x, 2y. So notice I have two components here, and I'm going to break this down into the equations from these two components. So for the x component, 2x has to equal lambda times 2x. And for the y component, 4y has to equal lambda times 4y. And then I also need to take into consideration the constraint. And notice that I have three equations here. So in right here, I have three equations, and I've got three unknowns, x, y, and lambda. So in these problems, you need to set every component of the gradient equal to each other, and then also consider the constraints. When we solve this, the critical points or the points where we might hit a max or a min, I probably shouldn't call them critical. It's not necessarily critical. The points where we will hit maxes and mins, these are absolute maxes and mins, will become apparent. All right, so I just need to look at these equations and figure out. Um, so I like to pick the most simplest one, and I'd say that's either the first one or the second one. And maybe the first one, because we have 2x and 2x. And if you look at this, there is two options that can happen here. Either lambda is equal to 1, and then 2x is equal to 2x or x could equal 0 in that equation, and it makes it true. So you need to search for all values that make that, make that true. Now, if lambda is equal to 1, if we plug that into this next equation, if lambda is equal to 1, then we get 4... I'm sorry, I wrote something down wrong, right? Oh, that should be a 2. It should be a 2 because it came from this gradient. So if that gradient, it makes that a 2. So we've got 4y equal to 2y. And so the only way that that can happen is if y is 0. Now if y is 0, then x has to equal plus or minus 1. This gives me two different points here. 
I've got one zero and negative one zero. When x is zero, we can't do anything with x equals zero in this second equation. There's no x's in it. So we'll plug it into this third one. So when x is equal to zero, y is going to be plus or minus one. So this gives me two more points, zero, one, and zero, negative one. Now we've got to figure out which, are, which is the biggest and which is the smallest according to our function, our original function. So if we take one zero and plug it into this original function, it looks like we get one. If we plug in negative one zero, yep, the same, we get one. If we plug in zero, one, we're going to get two. And if we plug in zero, negative one, we're going to get two. So that means that our absolute maxes, where this rubber band kind of touches the parabola, it's going to touch the parabola at a height of two, and that happens at where x is equal to zero and on either y value. It's going to touch that parabola at a minimum point when a height at a height of one. That's the minimum point that the rubber band touches the um, the function, the paraboloid. And that happens when y is zero and then on either end of x. So this is this is it for Lagrange multipliers. Found our mins and maxes. This is a pretty simple problem. You just have to remember this equation here plus the constraints is really what you want to look at. And the whole trick in this can be solving that because it is possible to end up with like five equations and five unknowns. And that can get a little bit tricky um, on solving those. It's all just algebra and substitution methods. Um, but just know that, that this definitely is more, can get more complicated. It's kind of this process in here that's complicated. After this process and after you get points, you just plug them in. Um, but, but again, this algebra process um, can be a little lengthy in these.